background on the just try that a little bit from the opening once and, and you know think a little bit more in cut time maybe than in 4-4. It's been very interesting trying to work with students through the quarantine time. Everybody's equipment and internet connections have a lot to do with what they're sounding like to me, what I'm sounding like to them. And that's been difficult for all of us. But with one of my students, it has not had to be online Zoom lessons because when he came home, his teacher was there. And of course, that student is my son, Peter. <laughs> suggestion there. I started playing an instrument when I was four years old. I loved performing and playing for people and playing with people. That was always something I really enjoyed, but I hated practicing. They would always be on my case every single day, like, did you practice, did you practice? And the answer was usually no. Um, and they knew that because they could hear me. Through all that time, it wasn't apparent that he was really going to want to do this long term. We thought he was going to go into coding, uh, into computer science, which he started to do. I went to WPI, Worcester Polytechnic Institute, for computer science. While I was there, I was part of the brass ensemble, the concert band, and the jazz band. I had come to the realization over the course of that year that when I was playing music because I wanted to, and not because my parents wanted me to, that it was something that I really, really loved. And so it was at that point that I decided I wanted to major in music. When Peter transferred to BU, this really was the first time we were going to be working together. Not just as father and son, but now as teacher and pupil. At that time, I was also his advisor and his chamber music coach. I mean, wow, Dad, hello. We always, from day one, made sure that it was really clear that we were going to make the separation. In lessons, I wanted him to treat me like any other student. I feel like you're just in ever so slight a bit of a hurry. Let it come as it comes. Okay. He is very, very encouraging, very kind, very empathetic. That's something that I've always really loved about him as a teacher. And I have to say, even the, the teacher-student relationship with Peter, as a father and a son, he's made it really, really easy. It's not unheard of for a young person to kind of discount their parents' advice. Oh, it's, it's dad. But Peter has always treated me with professional respect. Growing up, he's always been the person that I look up to, the sound that I want to imitate when I'm playing. And over the years, more and more people have told me that I am starting to sound like him, even in my playing, which is the greatest compliment I could get. Even though at some point we know we will have to let him go, it actually is nice having everybody here together, going through the situation together. And, you know, we're all here, and if, if we want to play some duets or practice some orchestral excerpts together, we can do that. Growing up all the way through, like, elementary, middle, high school, I was always, like, really, really close with my mom. My dad was at work all day, and so I loved him. Don't get me wrong, but I just didn't spend a lot of time with him. And so since getting to BU, I've gotten so much closer with my dad. Now I would say he's one of my best friends. My hopes for Peter going forward are that he finds fulfillment in what he does. Because I have been able to do it in music, um, certainly there's the deep down hope that maybe we could play together in the Boston Pops someday. I mean, I mean, my goodness, I mean, would that just not be the most awesome thing? As we know in this situation, nothing is given in this world. But I'm confident he's got a good head on his shoulders. He's a young man of faith that isn't going to be shaken, and I think he's got the long view in mind.